Good evening, members of Redeemer, friends. We are considering the glory of God's work in creation and the praises that are due his name for the greatness of his creation in Psalm 104. The psalmist began uh, uh, by stirring up himself to praise the Lord. Bless the Lord of my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. And now, having set the scene of the greatness of God, and especially God's greatness in creation, in creating the world, he turns now to God's tender care and love for the world. And in, as it were, various scenes, he highlights different aspects of God's tender love and care for creation. And so let's begin in verse 10 and read of God's tender care for his world. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every, uh, every beast of the field. The wild donkey quenches their thirst. Besides them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. Once again, we see here the tenderness of God's presence. It's not merely that he creates water to sustain life and then leaves the world. Notice the way in which the psalmist describes sees that the constant flow of water that gushes forth is God's constant presence and care for every creature. And notice here, this is the beasts of the field, the, the wild donkey, the, the stubborn animal that nobody cares about, God cares about. God provides for him. And then the birds, the trees grow next to the water and there God provides for them. And we're going to see this more and more. From his lofty abode, you water the mountains and the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. God sustains the world by water making it fruitful and that leads to the next important picture the provision is also the way in which God sustains uh, life by providing food through the growth that is now produced by the water verse 14 you cause the grass to grow uh, for the living stock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart. Notice here how God provides growth so that the earth may produce, so that man may may turn what the earth produce into bread and wine to sustain his life, to produce the food that he needs. Uh, um, man cultivates that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, bread to strengthen man's heart. Isn't that amazing? So that he is thinking not merely of, of God's sustaining the earth that it may grow, but he is also thinking that the skill and uh, insight and technology needed to take grain and to turn it into bread, to take an olive and to turn it into oil, to take uh, um, a grape and to ferment it, to turn it into delicious 
uh, wine that gladdens the soul. And all of this is a sign and a picture of God's love and tenderness and care for the world and for those who live in it. It's a display of God's goodness. That's what he sees. And now he continues. In verse 16, the trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon uh, that he planted. In them the birds build their nest and the stork has her home in the fir tree. The high mountains are for the wild goats and the rocks are a refuge for the rock badger. Do you hear what he is saying? God provides for every creature the perfect place for them to build their home, for their life to flourish. Everything needed for God's creatures to live here, he provides. And notice, it's the birds of the air. It's the stork, the wild goat, the rock badger, the variety of God's creation, each need different environments to live, and God has provided each of them. But these are insignificant creatures which display just the beauty of God as creator, who cares for creatures that no one may even see he provides for them. But now, what does these creatures need? They need rest and they need light, sunshine, dee. And so we see that even the day and night, God provides for his creatures so that their life may flourish. He made the moon to mark the season. The sun knows it's time for setting. You make darkness and it is night. When all the beasts of the forest creep about, the young lion roars for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their den. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. Do you see how perfectly God has ordered now life, day and night? We're, we're, we're here in God's care in, in, in the giving of the sun and the moon, the fourth day of creation, to mark the seasons, to mark off the time. And he gives darkness. Notice, it is made by God. It's God's gift. And there are creatures of the night that need the darkness. That's when they go out and hunt. Notice the lion roars for their prey. One of the most uh, spectacular things uh, 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 that I've experienced is, is going to uh, the Kruger National Park in South Africa. And uh, uh, when you leave, uh, they have these different camps and it's, you just drive in your vehicle and you can see the animals. And so when you leave early in the morning, you often encounter lions who are still uh, devouring uh, the prey that they have caught that night. During the daytime, they're very lazy and lie around. But it is at night that they go out and hunt. And here the psalmist acknowledges that. And notice, God also cares for man. That's why he made daytime so that we may flourish. And at night time, we rest from our labor. Because we are not God. Sustained by our own energy and effort. We need food. We need rest. And God knows because he made us, and so he gives to us what we need. Is it any wonder that he takes a break right here? Right here, and he marvels. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you made them all. 
The earth is full of your creatures. Notice what he is saying here. As he steps back and as he praises the Lord, he says, what a variety. What a beauty in all that you have made. And they display such such creativity, such wisdom, such design, such care. Everywhere I look, I see the creatures that you have made. You have made them all. That's remarkable, isn't it? And then he turns his thought to the sea. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teem with creatures innumerable, living things, both small and great. There goes the ship, the Leviathan, which you formed to play in it. The Leviathan is, is, is a mysterious creature that God delights in, and he delights in his play in the ocean. But then the ships, human creation, now are able to take their cargo to the other side, uh, to other nations and other continents. God sustains his world. And even the sea, mysterious, untamed, threatening, that teems with living things that are mysterious and inexplicable, God upholds even that. Do you see the glory of your God, the creator, the sustainer of all things? Let us join the psalmist in declaring the praises of God in his creation. We'll conclude the psalm tomorrow night. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we want to praise and magnify you for your care for this world, for your care for us for the way in which you shape and sustains life by water, by providing food, by providing a house for us to live in, by providing all that we need. Lord, you are truly great, and your greatness is displayed not only in the oceans, but also in each of our lives. Thank you for your care for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.